All right, we got that. Hello, I'm Jean-Marie Barajas. I'm the IP coordinator up at Wilson High School. Thank you for being here today. Where are my mules? Great. Um, we have a lot going on up at Wilson. We're really excited. Um, our current ninth graders will be our first diploma program students. So we're excited about that. So have a great day and enjoy the summer. Okay. Disfrutenlo. Mientras fuera. Okay, pues el tiempo vuela. Hace unos años, about 20 years ago, this group of viejitos, we, we get together to develop a program in East Los Angeles called El Joven Noble. And through all these years, we develop a Native American talking state. This talking stick, it got the same significance when you go to the program and they give you the shirt with palabra. So I want to pass the palabra to a good friend of mine, compadre Bobby Bertugo. And Bobby Bertugo, you want me introducing another good compadre que le gusta hacer muchos chistes, muy bonitos, muy sabrosos, pero también muy picantes. So, prepárense. Mira. Hasta el baby me está echando pelotas. Bobby, welcome to Wilson, El Cerebro, Pantero, Pensano, Helper. Buenos días. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to trade my walking stick for this talking stick, so give me a second. Don't tell my first joke. Well, <laughs> oh, thank you. It's, it gives me great pride, and I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Tengo mucho orgullo estar con ustedes hoy. Because last year I was the keynote speaker for the ninth annual uh, community parent fair, and um, and this year I have the honor of introducing a man who will be your keynote speaker today, who will share some stories, um, a little bit about himself, the work that he's done in the community, the work that he's doing now, and. I think the best thing about it is going to share a lot of chistes with you today too. And in the moment you'll, you'll realize why and how. Um, I've known um, Rudy Moreno for many, many years. We were at the same school around the same time. I'm a little bit older than him. Well, maybe he's like my brother's age, I think. But, but I remember him in, in um, in, um, in high school. Then I also remember him uh, saving our family a lot of grief because at times we would have trouble finding money to pay our utility bill. But old Rudy was working at the Southern California Gas Company and he used to give us a quebrada. And I don't think his old bosses are here, so I don't think he'll get in trouble for that. But he will give us a little extension to pay our bill, so thank you for that, Rudy, because Man, it's pretty cold sometimes. Um, that was another joke. But anyway, <laughs> um, let me, let me, I got some pictures that I want to share with you, and uh, I don't want to embarrass Rudy, but you know, Rudy has done a lot. If you don't know who Rudy Moreno is, and if you don't know what he has done in, in the area of entertainment and in the area of giving back to his community. I'm going to share some slides with you. The first one gives you a picture of who he is. We all know him as the godfather of Chicano comedy. This man has been around for years telling jokes. I think you got your first start with Tierra, was that right? Or right around that time when Tierra was doing their concerts all around, they would ask Rudy, hey, can you warm up the crowd first? They tell a few jokes. So Rudy would go up there and he 
stand in front of you, do the mix on with the stuff, the hot pole, and you know, make, make, make jokes and get everybody laughing. But, but we realized this, this guy's talented, this guy's got a future, he's going to be... And he was one of the first, you know, like, right now you turn on the TV or HBO, you see George Lopez, you see uh, Gabriel Iglesias, you see all of these guys. And you know what, Rudy was around way before them. He, he started, he was one of the first pioneers of Chicano Latino comedy. Next slide. He and his wife Arlene have been a, a partnership even before they got married and, and especially after. Because not only have they been married to each other for how many years, Rudy? 32 years. Many of those years together they have been giving back to the community. They do an annual Christmas show that started somewhere in Alhambra, in a little bar, you know, where they got together and started telling uh, jokes and get comedians together to try to raise toys for people who needed uh, help during the Christmas time. And it grew since then. And now we, and I say we because I've been a part of it now for about 15 of those years, we are entering our 23rd year of the Comics for Kids. And you have to know that Rudy and Arlene have not only provided chistes and comedy and, and, a, and a venue for many up-and-coming comedians, including myself, to, to, to try and make people laugh. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But they managed to be able to collect toys, not for themselves to sell, but to give back to the community. And last year, if it wasn't for the Comics for Kids 2013 comedy show, the comedy, I mean the comedy, the Christmas program that we have here at El Sereno, the one that was uh, here at the, the middle school in December, half of the toys that were given out were provided by the, the donations we got from Rudy Moreno. So let's give Rudy a big hand before you do something. And this is it. This is this is the billion. This is the billboard for a couple of year, years ago, 2011. I couldn't find last year's, but uh, and it's at the ice house. So be ready for December 2014 because they're going to be back at the ice house again. And he has a real cool looking Santa Claus that, that helps him out. And I'll show you a couple slides of him too. Next one. There he is. These are some of the comedians that were there last year. You can see the great Omar, who was here with us today, Omar Covarubias, who was also one of the, the, the outstanding young comedians. So this great Omar, he's at the bar today. You can see that there is also uh, Jeff Garcia and a few others, uh, you know, who are up there. So, next slide. And at last year's Christmas show, we had also the, the guy on the left, um, in the middle, standing next to me. If you don't recognize him here, you'll be seeing a lot more pictures of him in the papers over the next couple of days, because last night, a new movie where uh, Edward James Olos and Richard Montoya called Water and Power opened up citywide, and the actor who, one of the stars of the, of the movie, uh, Emilio um, Alvarez, who also comes out in the Sons of Anarchy is right there next to this twin, Ozzy, who you can find out there somewhere. And Richard's there too, and there's one more. Go ahead. Rudy is a family man, and, and he's going to share some, some stories and some things about what the family means to him and why he does what he does because of his family and for his family. And here he is with his grandchildren. He said that is one of his favorite pictures. Next one. Rudy has been on many, many uh, shows on TV. Uh, he, he has been on, on Jay Leno. He's been on, uh, what was the one where you're wearing a cowboy boots for you? <laughs> Kingpin. Uh, many, many, many uh, things that, that, that Rudy has been actually uh, on, on TV for. There he is with uh, 
Gabriel Iglesias. Next one. So last year, we were able to do the, uh, the program here in El Cerrino and, and Santa Claus. And I, I can also say that I'm really proud to be a part of that because I've been your Santa for the last five years. And a couple years ago, we actually had the fire department provide the transportation for us. So thank you so much, the El Cerrino community. Go ahead. And here it is. This is us giving away the toys. And, and again, many of these toys uh, wouldn't have been there had it not been for the Comics for Kids show that we, that we did at the Ice House last year. Next one. And here we are waving goodbye, which I'm going to do right now before I introduce you. Yeah, that's me. Go ahead. And here's, uh, and like, like I mentioned, Rudy has been a friend of the family. Here's him with uh, the Verdugo boys, my brothers and myself, but not Sperry Farm. No, no, that's not a <laughs> Next one. And this was uh, Rudy supporting me on my first effort to try to tell some chistes. I, I, I uh, did my comic debut uh, about seven years ago in Lincoln Heights at a, in a bar. I talked about a hard place to start and uh, a tough house to, to get going, but Rudy was there to support me and uh, I think I did a pretty good job that night. Go ahead. And here's Jeff Garcia and Rudy and Jeff. And Jeff actually got his start with Rudy and they have been performing together for over 20 years and ever since Jeff was about 17 years old, I think he was, he, he made his debut with Rudy. Go ahead. And here we are at the ice house. Rudy and Sancho Claus. And you can't tell with a white face, but that's me right there. In the zoot suit. Next one. And I just wanted to share this because as part of the work that we do, and I include Rudy in that, there are many hombres like Memo and Ricky Lopez and, and others who have been working too, really hard to make sure that we provide a, a better place for fathers to be, be better fathers uh, and to be part of families. Everybody talks about how many homes are without dads, that there's many single moms, but uh, in our work we try to include fathers as, as much as we can and it, and it seems to work because when fathers are involved, kids do better. Of course when moms are involved they do great, but when dads are involved, they do just a little bit better when they have both parents in their lives. So when we talk about in like itch, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it means you are my other me. Tu eres mi otro yo. And that's talking about the relationship that we have with our partners, with our wives, with our girlfriends if you're not, if you're not married, and with our children. Because you are my other me. Tu eres mi otro yo. In la cage. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stick around because uh, I, uh, just because, because <laughs> I want to hear what he's got to say. But it gives me great honor, great privilege to introduce a dear friend, a good man, a good father, and a great comedian. And the next time we show, also a very humble man, Mr. Rudy Moreno.
But always a good school. They have the prettiest girls in Wilson. I gotta say that. They're, they're probably a school because the girls in Lincoln, fortunately, they weren't as pretty. <laughs> I think they had them all in one class, like you hear Beita, you go in that class right there. <laughs> So thank you guys for coming out early this morning. Uh, I don't normally see the morning because I work at night. So I feel like, you know, Dracula working up in the morning. You guys know what Dracula is, right? I keep forgetting you guys are teenagers, man. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about myself and Bobby. We grew up in a neighborhood called Lincoln Heights, which is all three miles that way. You guys familiar with Lincoln Heights? All right. It was a cool time. It was like, it was like uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Mayberry and the old Andy Griffith show that you watch on TV. We had everything in our in our neighborhood. We had a you know we had a theater. We had a pet store. Well, it wasn't really a pet store. It was a, a guy that had a dog and a cat and a couple of chickens. You know what I mean? And we had a boys and girls club. And everything was brought to the house. We had a we had a helmsman. You guys know what a helmsman is? Helmsman used to deliver donuts. He drive up in the truck. That's why we all got diabetes today. <laughs> this guy would sh show up at 12 o'clock every day, 15, 8, donuts! And you go up there and you buy the donuts, and this is the end result. We had a milkman who would bring milk and cheese and eggs to the house. We had an ice cream man who was drunk all the time. He never ran over any kids, but, you know, he was telling the ice cream man we could count on this guy. So everything we needed was right there in the community. So we never had to leave. Whenever we did leave, we'd go somewhere like Baldwin Park, and that was far, too. I was like, man, are we ever coming back? We, everything was good. Let me, let me take a look at my notes here, and I'll tell you more exciting things. All right. We had pretty good school. We went to Gate Street School and Lincoln High School. Lincoln was a junior high and a senior and a high school at the same time. And they would teach us vocabulary, as opposed to some of the vocabulary today. And I tell my grandkids, speak up, man, you know, talk. Because this is a conversation. So cool. <laughs> so dog. Did you do that? No, I didn't. No, you didn't? No. So, man, so beautiful. We don't mean so talk. You guys know what I'm talking about, man. Put this over here before I kill somebody. We also would respect our elders a lot. You could be doing some dumb thing. You could be fighting. And as soon as you had a pass in the middle of the fight, you would stop and say hello. Give me that. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Gonzalez. How are you? Nice to see you. It was a respect thing. I was a trouble for a day. I didn't get a, like a crown or a cape or anything. I was just a trouble for a day. And by own mind. And my father saw this. And my father stopped it right there. Hey, tu, Orlo, come here. What? You're a trouble? I'm not gonna get But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part is this. They took me home to my mom and told her I was trouble for a day. And you know who, you know who does the, the, the discipline in the house? It's always the mom. And it's not with talking or the belt. It was the chancla of dad. You ever get this chancla at the house? You guys, it's passed down from generation to generation. Your great grandmother gave it to your grandma, and grandma gave it to your mother. Mira, mijo, cuando tengas hijos, te pegas con esto. You know, and it's, <laughs> this thing glows, man. It's like, it's, you know, chancla from some other planet. And, it, and you never see it coming. You never see it coming. There's like, oh, were you in trouble for the Well, uh, I don't know. I think I could. Oh, what is it? Come here, give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. <laughs> she was the Mayweather of 1965. I never answered my mother back. I did once. I did one time, and I will never, until this day, I don't use ivory soap. Because she said, you talk back to me one of these days and I'll clean your mouth up with soap. <laughs> Whatever. 
Where are you guys going? The bathroom? What's the story? What's going on? <laughs> Sit down, dude. You can't go to the bathroom. Right now. You guys go with the girls. I'll go with you guys. <laughs> Sit down, dude. My mother washed my mouth out with soap because I said, so? Just because I said, I didn't even say anything bad. I could have thought about a million things to say, but I said, so? Do you get so? Come here, come here. Again, John Hop, right in the back of the head, soap in the mouth. I said, like, really? You do that now, they call the cops on you. Always nice to be neighborly, guys. If you have neighbors on your block, get to know them. It's no because you never know when you might need them. There might be an emergency or something, you gotta go next door and call. And if you don't know that lady's name, you're never gonna get her attention. You know what I mean? We live in a block where everybody would sleep over everybody else's house. Your neighbors would feed you. They would take care of your kids for you. You could stay overnight. Other parents would discipline you because it was that tight of a community, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, hello, this is what I know your kids, you lit my cat on fire. I have a chocolate too. <laughs> I've been living in Monterey Park for 27 years now. I don't know my neighbors, man. I see them across the street. I do this. They do that. That's it. I'm afraid if my house catches fire and I go, hey, dude, what's your name? Whatever. I'll never get their attention. So know your people. Know your people on your block. Know your relatives and your family. All right? That's, that's, that's what's missing a lot of today. Somebody have a question back there? I have a chocolate in the car. <laughs> Jesus, what'd you learn, learn to whisper in a helicopter? <laughs> I can hear you over here. How embarrassing. And then I told them, and then he goes, and then I told him. <laughs> okay, I gotta clean this up, so I'm, gonna, I'm looking through my notes, kids. So. <laughs> Whatever you're doing now, Whatever you do now, whatever you learn right now, will reflect when you become an adult, okay? Now, when I was a kid, I was a payaso man. The family get-togethers in school, you know, at work with the guys, I was always a clown, ending up to be a comic, a stand-up comic. I'm not telling you to go out and be a comic, that's the last thing you need to do. I don't want you going home from this conference, Mom, the man that was there said to go ahead and become a stand-up comic. <laughs> but do what you want to do. Prepare yourself. You have to prepare yourself. You gotta have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're gonna end up lost. You know what I mean? Have a plan in everything that you do. In any kind of work. I, I ended up being a, uh, a stand-up comic because I wanted to work for myself. Plus, I, I wanted to, to get involved in the entertainment business. But as I did that, I had to learn business because as you start working for yourself, you have to learn how to incorporate your business because you're working for yourself how to get health care, how to have employees, how to take care of taxes. There's a lot of stuff that's involved when you get older. So you have to learn this stuff, man. You know, you can't go out of a bump of, I don't know how to do that. You can't do that. It doesn't work in the adult world. Always, always prepare yourself. Okay? You got me so far? Yes. Hello? Okay. <laughs> now, respect is a huge thing. If you ever get married, or you have a, a girlfriend or something, be respectful. I've been married over 30 years now because my wife and I have been respectful to one another. It doesn't happen a lot. You know, there's a lot of people that are out there. There's a lot of single parent families. Were there any single parent families here? Everybody's got both parents? Single parent? Sir? <laughs> yes, yeah, not, you're not going to jail, so don't just ask me. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> what I have to say about single parent families is, look man, if it's your mom or it's your dad, you got to respect what they're doing because that house that you live in and the food that's on the table is from them working very, very hard. And them doing something so hard that they have to cover the expenses to keep you fed, to keep you clothed, to keep you in your house. So I know sometimes they don't let you do stuff. Mom, can I go over here? No. Ooh, I hate you. No. You know you're that bad, but the, the bottom line is this, you have to respect your folks because they're doing everything they can for you. Because once you grow up, you gotta go do it. 
Now imagine you gotta get up every morning and go to work and you have a kid that's like, I don't like you. Really? Well, I don't like you either, but I gotta go cover you, you know? I gotta go make money to feed you, even though I don't like you. Wouldn't that be horrible? So respect that person. Respect one another. You only get one set of parents, guys. Okay? It's not like you can go down to Target and get another couple. You know? I lost my parents many years ago. Months apart. It's bad enough losing one, but to lose two a couple months apart sucks. It's terrible. But I didn't feel that bad because I was always respectful to my parents and I always appreciated what they did. So this way, when you don't have them anymore, you don't regret the fact that well, I should have called them, I should have been nicer to them, I should have done this, I should have done that. You know? Always be cool with your parents and they'll be cool with you. Believe me, it works. Now, let's see what else. When you go out and find a job, like a lot of people, especially in our community, Lincoln Heights, El Sereno, El Hammer stuff, they always tell us that we can't do stuff. You guys are going to do that. You can't, you can't be doctors, you can't be in this, you can't do that. Yes, you can. All you have to do is put your mind to it. And I know you hear this over and over and over again. But if you want to go get that job where you're you know, doing something just because you didn't want to go to school, then you're not going to be making that money. And if you're not going to be making that money, you're going to live a little less enthusiastic than most. If you want to live comfortably and have money saved, go get an education. Because they're not hiring people with high school degrees anymore. High school kid, you go, oh, I have my name from Wilson. Well, that's good. Go to college. I used to work for the gas company, like Bobby said. And I worked there, and I was in there, man, in my 20s. I was ready to go. I wanted to go into management. And they kept passing me by so some dude that came in two weeks ago and they promoted him because he had a degree from Loyola Marymount. I mean, I wanted to run over him with a car, but I didn't. But I could see that because he got the education, he got the better job. And when you get a better job, you're able to have more comfort in your life because going struggling from check to check, man, is not the way to do it, okay? So make sure you get that education. Now, I gotta talk to you guys, because people, especially the high school students, you're at an age right now where responsibility is like your first thought. Because amongst our people, amongst Latinos, there's a lot of teenage pregnancy. Okay, and we know how that happens, I don't have to explain that. Okay, we have to prepare. You have to have responsibility, man, because in that moment of passion, it might happen, you have to think, should I do this, should I not? And if you do, be prepared. And parents, prepare your children. Because they don't just go out there with tontitos and just end up pregnant. You have to tell them what to expect and how things happen. So that's your part of the responsibility. And I got serious here for a minute, everybody's quiet. Man, I'm responsible now. I can't take this anymore. And then he's still talking about it. Hijo, no. Look, you guys, when people talk about being successful, it doesn't mean that, put this up here, about being successful, it doesn't mean you have to be making a million dollars, man. You know what I mean? Being successful, it says, you're comfortable with your life, you're comfortable with your family, everybody's cool, everybody's healthy. You live in a nice, safe environment, you have money in the bank, in the bank, in the bank. You have money in the bank, you live in a safe environment, and your family is good. That's success. Don't get it twisted. It's not about running around in Rolls Royce, and, you know. And if you have some money, extra money, save it. Save your money. You know, Latino, we don't save it. We go buy rims. We don't even have cars. <laughs> We're buying rims. What are you going to buy? For your horse? What are you doing, man? So do that. So listen, be, be, uh, be good to yourself, you know? Be good to your families, get your education, be prepared, be responsible, and be respectful. That's all that we ask. Is that cool? Yeah. You guys can do that, right? Think of that a little bit today with Bobby and I and everybody else that's involved here. Sending this message. We're not, we're not up here because we just had nothing to do this morning. We actually care about this and we want to send a message to the young people because you guys, 
in 20 years, might be up here talking to another group of students from Wilson. Or maybe even from Lincoln, show them how to play football, you know what I mean? But well, listen, thank you so much. God bless you guys. Take care of yourselves. Thank you for having me. Huh? How old are you? You what? 
14, you're still playing with Red Bull here? <laughs> <laughs> right. Have fun with that. Later on, I'll give you some drink, you can go crazy. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, everybody. Here's something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Saben qué vamos a hacer? Todos los papás que están aquí les gustaría que nos juntáramos para darle una sorpresa a Flori y irlo a ver al club donde ella está. Sí. Ok, yo me pongo de acuerdo con ustedes. Ustedes me traen unas coronas y nos vamos a echar dos zonas de grita al modelo allá con él. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes. Un aplauso grandote. No se me vaya, no se me vaya. Que ahorita viene el número bueno. Ok. I want to tell you one simple thing. We are changing the whole program. Vamos a cambiar todo el programa for two reasons. We want to be doing one workshop for teenagers and those parents who feel they are a teenager. Vamos a hacer un taller nada más para todos los jóvenes y para todos los estudiantes y aquellos papás que se sientan que son niños y estudiantes. Y luego vamos a hacer otro taller para puros papás y niños que sienten que ya son papás. So we are doing two workshops and staying four workshops. Uh, Maestro, are you all conducting one workshop for the students? Ven para acá. Come on. Okay, so this is real simple. If you want to go to the workshop, one of the workshops you need to go when compadre, because he's handling in a special classroom a training, a workshop for all the students. And also parents if they want to go. I am conducting the other workshop for the parents. So you have two choices. You go with well, compadre or you stay with me. Real simple like that. Why? Any of you got... A ver, un aplauso para Rudy que ya va para afuera. Bye, compadre. Que Dios se acompañe. Vaya por Dios. Okay, any of you guys have the voucher that they give you to punch? So that way you can get a launch voucher. Let me, let me let me go. Otra vez con las pelotas. Okay. El secreto está aquí, que dice, if you are going to the workshops, los maestros, they can, they come like a half. So, if you guys want to get a ticket early for lunch, aquí está el secreto. One way shot con maestro, and one way shot con compadre Guillermo. Así de fácil. So yo les puedo firmar una mitad, y maestro les firma la otra mitad, y nos vamos a agarrar nuestro noche temprano. ¿Ok? Ricky, ya se fue. Ok. No tengo yo la lista de todas las agencias que vinieron, de todos los grupos, pero sinceramente yo les doy las gracias. I want to thank all the participant agencies and groups who they put together a book. Do me a favor. Cuando tengan chance, just go through that book. Say hi to comadre, compadre. Develop a relationship y amistad para que les apunten aquí and they can launch and get some more information. Ok, muchas gracias. Ya saben dónde van a hacer los workshops. No, ¿verdad? Ok, where is your workshop, maestro? Síganlo por esta puerta y todos los demás se quedan porque nos vamos por esta puerta nosotros. Muchas gracias. Ahorita nos vemos en los talleres, por favor. Les contaré.